A Chrono Cyber Cloud is a platform that enables service providers to deliver cyber protection in an easy, efficient, and secure way. With one solution, you and your customers gain access to hybrid cloud backup, disaster recovery, AI-based ransomware protection, file sync and share, and blockchain-based file notarization, all managed from a single console. So let's take a look at a console first. We will start with our Clients tab. From here, you can see all of your existing customers, manage them, and you can also create new ones. We'll go ahead and create our new customer. Select the services that are going to be enabled for this customer. And this is one of the main advantages in CyberCloud. You can have one single customer and you can activate different services for him at any given point. After that, we're going to go ahead and configure the quotas for the specific services. And here you can actually manage it very granularly and say, for example, we want to enable or disable workstations for backup and disaster recovery on this specific customer. And we can also go ahead and set up quotas and average for that customer, say again, eight and two. We can also enable or disable local backup and cloud backup. And we can also select what kind of cloud backup we're going to have in the back end. Let's go ahead and save and close. And there it is. Now for the existing customers, we can go ahead and also modify the services and the quotas that the customers have. So let's select this one here. Let's go ahead and edit. And here we can change the quotas on the workstations on the servers. We can actually activate or deactivate them as we wish. And we can also change the quotas on the other services. Let's say uh, notary or file sync and share. Everything from a single point. From this console and this tab, we can also take a look at what our customers are using at any given point in time. We have all the views on what the data sources, what they're using, how many workstations, how many servers, how many machines they're protecting, how many space are they using both on cloud and local backup, and also what status they're in. Is it active? Is it trial? Is it disabled? Etc. We can also change by service. So we can go ahead and check the file sync and share information or the notary information, for example, as we can have a look at each of them very granularly. Another great thing about this console is that you can have an overview of what's going on with your customers. If you go ahead and use each overview, you take a look at every one of the services, file sync and share, backup, etc. And you can take a look at what the data sources that your customers have. So there's a summary here that says that we're using 15 workstations, two mobile devices, Office 365 seats and all that. How many gigabytes or terabytes we're using on local backup and of course on our cloud backup and what type of cloud backup we're using. Is it a Cronus Cloud? Is it Azure? Is it Google? Is it Amazon or others? The management console will also give us an audit log. So we go ahead and to the audit log tab and we'll be able to take a look at what's happening inside our tenant. We're going to have a register for every action that every partner administrator is taking into the tenant. We'll be able to see things like tenant creation, modification, and of course, deletion. So we know at every point in time what's going on with our tenant. Also, we have a settings tab. And first of that is locations, where we're going to be able to add different locations and backup storages. And you'll see that we have Amazon and Azure as one of the locations listed. You can also download a Chrony Software Defined Infrastructure if you want to connect your own storage or if you want to connect uh, another public cloud and use it as a backend for the storage of backups of your customers. We also have the branding tab. From here, you'll be able to change how the console looks to your end customers. So full personalization on that. You'll be able to change the service name. You'll be able to change the logo and the colors as well that are going to be presented to them. Also the information, documentation and support, legal. You have an Opsol URL, mobile apps if you need to. And of course, you can personalize the email server that you're going to be using to send out the notifications to your customers whenever they have a notification from the service. Under the settings tab, we also have our integration tab. Here, you'll be able to see all the available integrations that we have on different automation systems. Also, you'll be able to find our RESTful API, which you can use to connect to CyberCloud as well. Once in the backup console, a customer will be able to register, manage, and protect their devices. If we go to the Add button, we're going to be able to see all the more than 21 platforms that we support, including physical, virtual, mobile devices, applications, and virtualization hosts. From here, we'll be able to download the agents. 
and we'll be able to register our devices. Once the machine is registered, we can go ahead and create a backup for it. We're going to create a backup plan. And in the backup plan, we're going to indicate what it is it that we want to backup from entire machine, takes volumes, files, and folders. In the case of applications, we'll be able to select application data. In the case of hypervisors, we'll be also able to select, in the case of VMware and Hyper-V, to backup the hosts. We're going to decide if we want to include the application on, or not. In this case, we're doing a snapshot of the entire machine using our snapshot technology. We're going to indicate as well where we want to store the backups, local folders, network folders, or cloud storage is available. We're going to select the schedule that we want for the backup to run and also all the starting conditions that it must have before executing the plan. We're going to indicate how long we want to keep our backup. This is the retention policies. We can do it by backup age, by number of backups, or we can keep them indefinitely. We can also encrypt the backups. Very important. We have an encryption algorithm, AES, key size 128 to 256 will indicate a password and that will encrypt the backup and it will make sure that only the person that has this password will be able to browse through the contents of the backup. We have many different backup options additional to the ones we just saw. We can control the compression level, we can control the performance as well, we can control the speed to which we upload to the cloud, we can execute commands um, before and after the backup and many other things that will enable us to control even better how the backup is executed. Once we have a backup set up and we have run our backup, we'll be able to do some recovery. We have another button right here, which is recovery. We can select it. And this is an example of what we can have once we have either a full machine backup or files and folders backup. We can go ahead and select the recover button and here we will give us options to either recover the entire machine or recover files and folders. This is an example of a machine running Windows, but we also have the same when we have a machine running Linux or when we have a machine running Mac. If we select the entire machine, we'll be able to recover this machine to another physical machine right from the console or we'll be able to recover this to a virtual machine as well once we have either VMware or Hyper-B. If we want to do granular recovery, we can go ahead and select that files and folders directly from the console as well. And we can select what is that we want to recover and we can recover it to the existing machine or to a new machine. We can also select our run as VM button right here when we have backups of full machines. This will trigger the instant restore technology that will allow us to recover a machine in 15 seconds or close to that time. We can recover from different locations as well. It depends on where we have backed up that information and we can all do it from the console. We can also recover machines using a bootable media when we're doing bare metal recovery and we can use our universal restore technology that will allow us to recover machines to different hardware or go from physical to virtual or virtual to physical environments. We also have an activities tab that will show you what is going on with the different uh, register machines. We also have an alerts tab, which is going to tell you what is going on, either critical or if there's an error with any of the services, you will have it here as well. And on the settings tab, we're going to find our agents and we'll be able to do an update directly from the console to our agents in the installed machines. As an additional layer of protection, we also have our active protection technology available to all Windows machines that is going to protect the machines against ransomware attacks. We can enable it on every machine. We can select active protection from the console and we can apply the plan to that machine. If we go ahead and edit, we'll see the options that we have. We can go from a notification. We can also stop the process and we can even revert the changes using our active protection technology. This will allow you to have another layer of protection against ransomware attacks and we're using artificial intelligence to be able to protect not only your information but also your backups. Another service inside Acronis Cyber Cloud is Acronis Disaster Recovery Cloud. With Acronis Disaster Recovery Cloud, you'll be able to protect your critical workloads against any disaster on site. And you'll be able to turn on a recovery server in the Acronis Cloud. So let's go ahead and take a look at that.
once you're in the console, the first thing that you will be able to do is actually set up a VPN so we can create a site to site connection from the on site network to the Acronis data center. This will allow us to create a recovery server that will have the same IP as you have now in production and will be able to communicate with any customer that is on site. Once we have that set up, we're going to select the server that we want to do this as recovery on. And one of the requirements is that we have already done a backup to the cloud of such server. Since we're using the backup that was created with Acronis Backup Cloud, we won't need to install another agent inside the machine. We'll be using the same agent and we'll be using the same snapshot created. To create a recovery server, we'll go ahead and select it. We're going to select the size of the machine, both on CPU and RAM. As you can see, we have different sizes going from one virtual core core and two gigabytes of RAM to 16 virtual cores and 256 gigabytes of RAM. We'll select the size. We'll also select an IP address in the production network. This will be taken automatically from our VPN, though you can change it. And you can also select a test IP address so you can run the server in a test environment without affecting your production server. We can enable internet access for the machine as well, and we can also set up a public IP address for that server if needed. Once completed, we select Done. The recovery server is created and will be ready to deploy it at any given time. If there is a need to deploy a server, we go ahead and select it. We go to Disaster Recovery, and we can do a failover or we can do a test failover, depending on the situation. In this case, we're going to do a test failover and as you can see, we can select the point that we want to recover from. We'll select the last one. And it's starting to run the failover test. This will turn on the server on our data center, and you'll be able to connect to it, whether that is from your local network, through the site-to-site -site VPN that you enabled before, or you'll be able to connect to it through a point-to-site VPN using OpenVPN or such. As you can see, the server is now on. It took us a few seconds to turn it on and is now ready to be operated with. Once we're done, we can go ahead and select the test recovery and we can stop the testing or we can do a failback if we had done a, a complete failover. You can go ahead and take a look at the console directly from the web console. And here it is. We have our server running and we can go ahead and log into it. Going back to the Disaster Recovery Console, once we are running the server, we can either stop the testing, which will turn off the server and go back to normal, or we can do a failback if we are on an actual disaster recovery situation. And in this case, it will recover all the information that's been being saved on the server in the cloud to the server on site. Another feature inside Disaster Recovery Cloud is Runbooks. Runbooks will allow us to automate certain behaviors when we're talking about disaster recovery. If we go ahead and take a look at a runbook, we'll see that it has different steps and within each step you can have different actions. So this will allow you to automate your operations with a disaster recovery server. In this case we have a start server, we have a manual operation, and we have a stop server. If we were to execute this runbook, it would automatically start the server, it will wait for input, whatever it is that we are sending to that server. Once we go ahead and continue, it will automatically stop the server. So we can use this runbook, let's say for testing. And once we're done, we can go ahead and just take a look at the execution and see the results. Another service inside Acronis Cyber Cloud is Acronis Files Cloud. Acronis Files Cloud is our file sync and share solution. And from here, Every user can have their own documents and can share folders and files with other users within the organization. So let's go ahead and create a folder. And we're going to share it with someone inside our organization. We can have a message for them. We can allow addition and deletion. We can invite other members and we can set an expiration date for the folder. Once we go ahead and share the folder, 
we'll switch to another user and we'll see that this user already has some documents in it right if we go ahead and reload the page we'll see now that our shared folder is right here I can go ahead and create a document within it I can sync it from my machine we have an agent for PC we can also sync from Mac we can also sync from any browser in any platform if I have a file I can also set up a link to share it either publicly or with other Acronis Files cloud users. I can also set an expiration date for this link. I can also send it by email to anyone outside or inside my organization, set an expiration date as well. And I can also move it if I want to. Say I want to move it here, click OK. And since this is a share folder, if I go back to my other user, I will see the same document here. So this is allowing me to collaborate with other users and share in a secure way documentation and everything I need with all the users within my organization and even outside my organization. Now, as an administrator, I can also set up how Files Cloud is going to behave. We have general restrictions that will allow you a maximum allow size for files. We can also have certain um, blacklisted file types, let's say MP3s, MP4s, or whatever it is that you want to put up there. We have sharing restrictions as well. Are we going to enable for users to share it publicly or not? We have file purging policies. We have expiration policies. And of course, we have an audit log that will allow you to see what is going on within your tenant of Acronis Files Cloud. We can also set up the devices that are going to be enabled for the different users. And of course, we have general settings as well for the service. We can customize the web UI as well, and we can configure our own SMNTP server. Lastly, I want to show you a bit about Acronis Notary Cloud. Acronis Notary Cloud uses blockchain technology in the backend to actually certify documents and have them be verified in the future. This will allow us to know if a document has changed or not. And since we're using blockchain, this verification can be proved. How do we use it? Well, it's pretty easy. We can upload different files. Once we have the files inside Acronis Notary Cloud, it will be notarized by our notification uh, notarization service and this will take it to blockchain right it will keep it on the ledger and in the future we can go ahead and select the notarization certificate we can take a look at it it will give us date and time and also the name it will allow us to verify by ourselves if the document is the same as a document that i uploaded back whenever i uploaded it and it will also allow me to verify by uploading a document to see if it is the same document or not. Even if it has changed just by a bit, it will tell me this is not the same document. This is not the document that was notarized. This was not the document that was uploaded. So this is one of the services we have inside Notary Cloud. And the other service we have is signing of documents. We can add a file as well. And once we have the file inside notarization service, we can send it for signature to different people. You can see here the status. I have three people that need to sign this document. One of them is me, of course, and the other two, one of them has already signed it and a third one has still to sign it. So what happens when I upload a document so I can sign it? Let's go ahead and do that. So we're uploading a document. We're adding someone to sign it and then we send to sign. Once we have the document here, we can go ahead and sign it ourselves. We can have an e-signature, and we can also add a comment. So as you can see, very easy to use. We can use it to verify who has been signing documents, who needs yet to sign documents, and we can also use it to verify the integrity of a document that we previously uploaded. And that was a quick overview of Acronis CyberCloud and all the services inside CyberCloud. Acronis Backup Cloud, Disaster Recovery Cloud, Files Cloud, and Notary Cloud.